Hi, I'm Miranda Wright, and this is day 27 of our 120-day Upper Room Prayer Campaign. Today we're going to expose and pray against the spirit of music. My friends, it's time that the church learned the difference between the spirit of worship and the spirit of music because they are not the same. In fact, one is a counterfeit and a perversion of the other. We're going to talk about it a little bit today and pray against it, but it is a very deep subject in scripture that we will not have time to go into in its entirety. So I will place a link to a full teaching on the subject in the description of this podcast video. And I highly recommend and urge everyone in ministry to go and listen to that lesson in its entirety because this is a huge area of opportunity that the enemy uses to get the church into agreement with him against the will of God which shuts the power and presence of God out of many services. Because that we do not know how to identify the difference between the spirit of worship and the spirit of music. Many years ago, God had my husband and I ministering at a conference in the Baton Rouge area, and we were quite excited to go and participate. But right before we were going to leave to head that way, As I was praying, the Lord prompted me to open the Bible, and it fell open to a verse where God was telling a people, literally, I hate your worship. And it shook me, and I said, Lord, what is this? And he told me, go and tell them that their worship is a Cain's sacrifice. And so I pressed the Lord, and he began to explain to me the difference between Cain's sacrifice and Abel's sacrifice. And I saw the parallel of what he was telling me played out in a many a church service. And I think that we've all been guilty of it at one time or another until you come to a place where you can recognize it and repent of it. And so what he began to show me was that the scripture says that Cain was envious of Abel because that Abel's sacrifice was righteous unto the Lord. Well, to understand the biblical definition of righteousness, which means to be in right standing with God, in other words, to do what he has told us is right and not what we think is right, would make it very plain to understand that Abel had sought the Lord, that the Lord had given Abel instructions on how he wanted this sacrifice to be done. And though it was not what Abel wanted to do, in faith and love and and humility and adoration, he did as the Lord instructed because the Lord had a message to bring forth through the actions of this sacrifice. Because in Abel's obedience to sacrifice this little lamb that he loved dearly, God was bringing forth the prophetic word of what he was going to do that would bring power and authority in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Therefore, Abel's sacrifice was pleasing unto the Lord because it wasn't what he wanted to do, but it's what he was told to do that he was willing to do in faith to bring forth the message that God wanted to deliver. But Cain... Cain did what Cain wanted to do. Cain presented a sacrifice that was what he liked, what he wanted, what he was proud of. It was the works of his own hand delivered unto the Lord, and and therefore it was not sacrificial, it was not obedience, and it was not the message that the Lord wanted to bring forth. What Abel did was say, God, I really don't want to drink from this cup, but nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. I worship you. But what Cain was actually doing was saying, God, look at what I've built. Look at what I can do. Look at what I've done. I offer this to you. Worship me. It's the works of his own hands. It's not what the Lord said to do. It's what he wanted to do. And therefore, Abel's sacrifice was pleasing unto the Lord, but Cain's was not because Abel didn't do what he wanted to do. He did what God said to do and what God said to do had purpose. Cain did what he wanted to do, what looked good on him, what felt good to him, what was pleasing unto him. And therefore, in actuality, it was self-worship because he was offering up a work of his own hand and worshiping it and asking God to participate. And my friend, a many of us do this in a many a service, especially in worship service. And we have to be very careful that we're not offering up the works of our own hands or what makes us feel good and putting it before men to be worshiped and asking God to participate. 
because God will not worship nor honor the works of men. And while the Bible tells us even in the New Testament that we are still required to offer a sacrifice of praise, we have to recognize that he will never honor this kind of sacrifice. And, and in the book of Amos, we see God's response specifically to this kind of sacrifice when he literally says, I hate your worship and I will not come into your assembly. But when we do this, something else will come into the assembly and it's a spirit of music. Because you see, immediately when this happened, God came to Cain and he warned him. He said, the enemy stands at the door and knocks. God told him, if you will do what is right, then you will be honored and lifted up above your brother. In other words, if you will humble yourself to seek me and do what I say and lay down your pride and what you want, then you can repent and be forgiven and I will come in. But if you don't, I give you warning. The enemy stands at the door. You see, we've all seen that image of Jesus standing at the door and knocking and waiting to see if we're going to let him in. But, but we seldomly think of what God spoke to Cain, that so does the devil stand at the door and knock. And I'm telling you, dear hearts, that humility opens the door to Jesus, but pride opens the door to the enemy. And it was because of envy that Abel had done what the Lord had asked. And the Lord was pleased because it was an act of faith. And that he was displeased with what Cain had offered because it was a work of his own hands. It was what he wanted, but not what God had said. Because God had a reason for the things that he was saying to be done. But Cain just wanted what felt good to the flesh. And therefore, the spirit of music will feed your flesh. Dear hearts, we have to be careful in every service that we are not picking songs that make us feel good. But we are seeking the Lord for what he wants to say. That we are not singing songs that showcase our talents, our voice, our skills, the works of our hands. Because that does not please the Lord. Obedience does. Because it's not for our entertainment. It's for a purpose to bring forth a message and a word that he himself will then walk into the room and endorse. And if we want to see the glory of God come, we've got to learn how to offer Abel's sacrifice. Because Cain's sacrifice grieved the Holy Spirit. And according to the book of Amos, he will not enter that assembly. And anything that does enter that assembly is going to be nothing more than the spirit of music, hype, pride, entertainment, working of the flesh. And worse than that, I have to bring you to the revelation of what the spirit of music really is. Again, I know I'm just touching on the surface of this teaching and I, and I implore you to go to the link in the description and listen to the entirety of this teaching because it, it is so important to the cleansing of our church and the purifying of our worship that the King of Glory could enter into our services so much more readily. My friend, this is important. But the spirit of worship is humble. It seeks the Lord. It is the Holy Spirit of the living God submit it to the will of God to bring forth the word and message of God that it can then be endorsed by the power of God we talked yesterday about that position of worship that the son of Saul came before King David with that absolute reverence and humility that said I know I'm not worthy and I know you have all authority power and dominion and I should be struck dead right now so I don't even have the right to speak to you I have nothing to bring to you but I believe that you are who you say you are I acknowledge you as that and I worship you for it and I'm not moving until you tell me to that's a heart of true worship but the spirit of music let me tell you about the spirit of music in the Bible, we hear this clear description about this anointed but coveting cherub. Yes, the spirit of music carries an anointing, but it is not a holy anointing. And its goal is not to bring forth the clear and direct word of God for that time and that season. Its message is to distract and disrupt and turn the hearts back to the flesh. Because that anointed but coveting cherub, it says whose job it was to walk before the throne of God day and night with all manner of music coming out of its beings. The Bible says that he was created with strings and percussions 
in all manner of jewel and beauty. He was the most beautiful angel ever created. And he was created with instruments built within his very being. And day and night he walked before the throne of God, worshiping. He would open his mouth and music would flow out. He was the spirit of music. You see, we see throughout scripture different things. For example, the Bible says that God is love and that God is a spirit. Therefore, God truly is the spirit of love. And all of the fruits of having that spirit within you are manifested in the fruits of the spirit, which are all exemplified in love. And then we hear things about God saying, I've not given you a spirit of fear, but there is a spirit of fear and it makes you fearful. And we see that there is a spirit of death and we see references in the old testament to a spirit of jealousy and when it come upon the man it makes him jealous and we see about the holy spirit and he, how he has seven attributes of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of the fear of the lord and all of these different types of spirits and we see that those spirits are responsible for the function by which they are named so when we are talking about the spirit that was literally created to bring forth music we are talking about the literal spirit of music the spirit that is behind music all music except for one kind of music because you see this angel's job was to worship but as he worshiped the Lord God Almighty, being this beautiful creature that he was, with all of this talent and skill and ability, he began to become prideful. He began to trust his own thoughts and vain imaginations. He began to want what he wanted. He began to want to be worshipped. And so he stopped worshiping God, thinking that by not worshiping God, God would no longer receive worship. And he began to try to heap worship upon himself. He began to cause others to want to follow the works of his own hands. And so he was cast from heaven. And we know him now as Lucifer. But he literally is the spirit of music. Therefore, does the spirit of music always divert worship from God and bring it upon those being used by the spirit, the performers, the venue, the emotions, anything, as long as the word of God does not come forth so that the will of God can come forth because God will not move until first he has proclaimed. He does nothing until he reveals it to his servants, the prophets, first. This is why Abel's worship was so valuable. Because though it wasn't what he wanted to do, it's what God told him to do. To be the first person to ever deliver the message of the sacrificial lamb that would be slain to take away the sins of the world. Such a powerful and purposeful message. That Cain thought he could replace by offering up the works of his own hands. Pride. Lucifer. That great deceiver. The spirit of music. My friends, I'm just scratching the surface to expose to you the tactics so that we cannot fall victim to it. Because that old cunning serpent, he is so sly. Because you see the spirit of worship that truly understands worship. When they see a service not going the way that they know the Holy Spirit has directed it. Their heart is grieved. It is broken. They will weep and pray and fast for days because of the brokenness of what they know that was missed. But a person with the spirit of music, when things don't go the way they want it to go, they will become angry. And I'm telling you, my friend, so that you can recognize when it comes upon you, this is an identifier of the spirit of music pride but the spirit of God moves in brokenness and it's sad enough when the word of the Lord doesn't come forth in the time and the season that he has desired for it but my friend I tell you that it goes even deeper than that and I go into full detail in this in the full lesson that I will link but 
there is power in agreement and when a, and when people are worshiping what they are worshiping they are coming into agreement with this is why it is so important to make sure that your worship teams are sanctified church please church don't go out and hire professional musicians to come in and play in your church you would do better to worship real worship with no music than to worship the spirit of music because who is leading you into worship you are coming into agreement with and if they are moving through a spirit of music you're actually imparting that to the congregation and more than that because deep calls unto deep right those who truly have the holy spirit and the anointing they pull that up in you they, that stirs that spirit that gift up in you but so does it work the other way because familiar seeks familiar and I've seen it a many a time where worship leaders who were not holy and pure before the Lord imparted very unholy things to the people who were coming into agreement with them again I don't have time to go in full detail on this you can listen to the entirety of the lesson I pray that you do so my friends, it's important to humble ourselves, to seek the Lord, to get the right spirit, to produce a true worship, to reject the spirit of music that manipulates and confiscates what should be God's, to make sure that all in leadership in your church are wholly sanctified and set apart, that their hearts are in the right place, that their hands are clean, before the Lord God Almighty because if you do it right this is what it looks like second Chronicles chapter 5 starting in verse 11 it says and it came to pass when the priests were come unto the holy place and all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by any course also the Levites which were the singers and all of them of Asaph, of Heman, of Jedathan, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linens, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty, a hundred and twenty, a hundred and twenty priests sounding with trumpets. Do you understand the significance here? This is what it takes to see the presence of God fall. This is what it took in the Old Testament and it's what it took in the New Testament. It says, it came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praise and thanks, in praise and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord saying, for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. That then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud for the glory of the Lord had filled the house. This is what it can look like when you get it right. So it's so important, people, that we cleanse our hands and purify our heart and seek the Lord and not try to offer up a work of our own hands or something that we did in our emotions or something that we saw somebody else do or what we like or what we want or what we imagine, but that we humble ourselves, seek the Lord, repent of doing things our own way, pray, Find out what it is that he wants. Then he will come. He will enter in and everything changes. It's not about your skill. It's not about your talent. It's not about your program. It's about the Lord. It's about the anointing because that's the only thing that will break the yoke. And it will only come to back up the word of the Lord that has been gotten in this secret place of prayer. Because my friend, remember that in the book of Amos, he told this people, I hate your worship and I will not enter into your assembly because of it. Yes, you can offer up a worship that is very displeasing unto the Lord. You can offer up music. But when you sanctify 
the worship team, when you sanctify the ministers, when you sanctify the priests, when they are cleansed and walking in right standing with God, doing only what God has said to do, what he said is right, the way he said to do it, not another way, any other way is a perversion and he will not enter into endorse sin. Because Psalms 24, 3 says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity. Cain lifted up his soul unto vanity. Abel did not. Cain wanted it his way. Abel offered it the Lord's way. But he who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Do you see what the Lord is saying here? He's saying saying those who humble themselves and seek his face, those Jacobs that he's talking to, those Jacobs that are willing to be a vessel of the living God to offer Abel's sacrifice, it's through them and through them only that the king of glory can enter in to a place. They are the gates. He said, lift up your heads, you ancient gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. We are the gate. We are the doorway. The Jacob that is willing to humble himself and submit to the will of the Lord, to bring forth the word of the Lord, the worship of the Lord, in humility and in sacrifice through that gate and that gate only will the Lord enter in. But every other door is the one that God warned Cain about, the one that the enemy stands at and knocks, the one that is opened for the spirit of music. Church, we've got to stop offering this Cain sacrifice and agreeing with this spirit of music. It's not about you. It's not for you. You have nothing to offer. And if you have not gotten on your face and sought the Lord for a direct word from the Lord, then you need to stop trying to be the Lord, to stop trying to offer the works of your hands. Because it's closing the door to Jesus. Remember that in the book of Revelations, he lists all these churches and all the things that they did right. But he also lists the things that they did wrong. And he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. My friend, that was the door of the church. Jesus was locked outside. He wanted to come in, but he couldn't. Because another spirit was already welcomed there. And he will not share his glory with another. Amos said that he could not come into the assembly. Because he hated their worship. I think a many a Sunday, a many a church put on a many a show. And Jesus stands outside the door and knocks. God, we repent of allowing ourselves to be deceived and misled by this spirit of music. We humble ourselves before you, God, that you teach us how to worship. That, Lord, we would have a people who would stop trying to do things in their own logic and in their own emotions. Because those things are always led of the enemy. But, God, that they would take time to humble themselves before you seek your face. Get your word and obey. Because when we by faith do what you want us to do, then your grace comes to do what we cannot do. And that applies to the worship too. God, we praise you. We thank you. That you are God and you are able. But God, we thank you that you expose the Cain sacrifice. And that we say today we want no part of it. We take authority against that spirit of music. We bind it and we reject it. We say forth in faith in the name of Jesus. That spirit of music, we do not agree with you. We do not welcome you into our churches anymore. It's not a show. It's not a performance. It's not for entertainment. It's not to feed the flesh. It is to be a word from the Lord God Almighty. So we surrender 
surrender and submit to the things that he says to do, the way he says to do it, when he says to do it, that we might offer a righteous sacrifice like Abel, one that is right, but because it is what you have said to do and not what we want it to do. God, we humble ourselves to you that, that you might come in and bring a weight of glory that would cause the ministers to fall to the floor and not even be able to speak because that you will do all of the work. God, move in our midst, but we have to humble ourselves before you. We got to repent first because you said only a people with a pure heart and clean hands, no motives, no agendas, no desire for vainglory, no sense of control, no envy, but simple humility and obedience to you. Someone who has sought you and gotten the word and walked in faith in it. God, I thank you that you stand at the door and knock, that you are willing to come in and do what no man can do, the greater works of the kingdom. But you're not going to come in to honor the works of men. You're not going to come in to a Cain sacrifice. You will only walk in when all of the leadership is sanctified before you, holy and submitted in obedience to you. When all of the leadership has a pure heart and, a, and clean hands, when they have sought your face and are walking in accordance with your will and your way, when they've gotten your design like Moses did. God, because if he would have altered your design even an inch, he would not have built something that you would have come and inhabited. And we've got to get it in our spirit that we can't do it. We can't add to it or it's strange fire. God, you came and you killed the sons of Aaron because they added incense. They added strange fire. They thought they had something to offer. They thought they could put some of their ideas into what you had ordained, but it wasn't your fire. It's what they wanted to add to it. And it was strange fire. You struck them dead and you told even their family, don't even mourn for them or I'll kill you too. That is how seriously you take it when people add to what it is that you are trying to bring forth and do because it alters the entirety of the message and you do not take it lightly. God, we repent before you for any time our hands ever touch strange fire because strange fire can't change anyone's life. It'll only bring them death. But the fire of the Holy Ghost comes in the Old Testament and in the New. When the people of God humbled themselves, sought your face, prayed, sanctified themselves before you, fasted, got your word and stood in faith on it until you came to endorse it. And God, we've got to do it in every single service, in every single worship set, in every single offering, in every single sermon, in every single outreach. Everything that we do has to be completely and totally led and laid out by you or it is a Cain sacrifice. At best, it will do nothing at all. And at worst, it will do and at worst, it brings us into agreement with hell and the wrong spirit into the service. I do not agree with you. I will not be used by you. But I will humble myself under the mighty hand of God. I will say what he tells me to say and I will say it in the way that he tells me to say it. Or I will say nothing at all. God, we pray in repentance for the times that we've been guilty. God, I thank you that you bring revelations because this is something that many do not know. It was a time I did not know it, Lord, but in your mercy, you showed me, God, and I thank you for it. And I will not go back to it because your word says that you will have no pleasure in those that draw back. So I'm not going back. I'm going forward and I'm bringing others with me. I'm going to teach them the truth and we are going to march on to Zion with power and authority and might because we're leaving that old spirit of music behind and we're going to do what the Lord tells us to do or we will do nothing at all. God, because it's easier for your glory to fall when we're doing nothing at all than when we're offering a Cain sacrifice. God, we seek your face. Teach us how to worship. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to humble ourselves and not move on a whim or an emotion, or by the leading of another spirit, because so easily does he get in the ear. So God, we pray that we not move so impulsively, but that we seek you first. We get your word, we get the confirmation, we, we make sure we understand it, and then we go with it and we stand on it. God, I've seen the glory of it. I've seen you walk into the room. 
And I felt the grieving of the Holy Spirit when I've watched you walk out of them too. Because a person stood up and took control. God, my heart breaks every time I see you walk out of a service and I know what could have happened except for the pride and the lie that took over and opened the door to the spirit of music. Because if you can't say what you need to say and do what you need to do, you've got no reason to be there. You'll go somewhere else where you can. And I have weeped through many a service because I have seen it happen over and over and over again. Church, stop acting on a whim. Stop moving in arrogance and ignorance. Seek the Lord. Humble yourself to him. Recognize that you don't know. You don't understand. Recognize that his wisdom is greater. His purpose is grander. His power is mightier. And seek him for what he wants. And even when it's not what we want or what we like or what we think or what we feel, choose to be like righteous Abel and say, nevertheless, not my will be done, but thy will, God. Here is my sacrifice of praise. This is my worship to trust you in faith because there's something here that you want to say. Because once he said it, then he will move in glory to endorse it and perform it. And that's what we want to see, Lord. The greater things that only you can do because we've seen enough shows. We've seen enough entertainment. We've seen enough empty services. We've seen enough of the limitations of the works of man and the Cain sacrifices and the spirit of music. We want more. We want the real. We want the pure. We want to worship.